carried on since the August 28, 2024 meeting of the Health and Conservation Commission. Um, I think we have quorum. People are online and members are here. So let's start with the first agenda item, which is the NY for 51 Cider Mill that's continued from August 14th. I just had to go through five layers of directory. So, do you want to talk about the differences? Do you want to talk about it? Okay, we have updated plans here. I guess you can see this. All right, so they moved the erosion control barrier to along the stone wall, which is a little closer toward the wetland, but the board was okay with that. They have a really tight line in behind the house here, keeping the well away from the wetlands to the rear. The wetland to the side here is an isolated wetland. And they did add the, the 150 foot offset line from the potential runoff pool. It's added. So it's, it is, as you can see, it's off to the edge. And uh, that, the work is well, you know, it's well away from the runoff pool. I think the other thing he added was bounds. So the bounds are along a 30 foot no disturb. There's two there at that wetland. And then two there at the, the smaller wetland. And a DEP number came in, and there were, I believe, no comments whatsoever. And so I think we are, I, and I did a draft order of conditions and everything, standard conditions with the bounds. I think we are ready to close the hearing and issue the order. Comments or questions? Right. Um, oh, you go. So no, no order of conditions has been issued yet in this project. Right. And the land's getting cleared. Yes, that is true. The okay. land is getting cleared. Uh, the board um, gave permission at the okay. last meeting um, for him to, to cut the trees and put the well in. Okay. Only and the erosion controls are already in. Okay. So and we don't typically do this, but it's, it's asked. Yeah, it's asked to, to do that. So we keep moving. Yeah. So you'd like to suppose? Yes. There's a motion to close. So discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alan, aye. Yes, yeah, Anderson. Motion, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. Three, nine. And the applicant is proceeding at their own risk here. You know, there's a 10 day appeal period after the order is issued. And if anyone does appeal, then you will be shut down until it's resolved. So we can get that to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you. Uh, see you, neighbor. <laughs> no, Chris, yet. Should we check or something? No, she's just right. Oh, this is their check on the phone. She's in the valley. Yeah, the phone number's there. Yeah. How you doing? 
So um, maybe we can go to um, start the administrator's report. I'm just going to share my screen so we can look at my agency. All right. So I did a, um, a walk through at Claflin Farm, kind of, they're getting towards the end, um, not quite, they haven't asked for a certificate of compliance yet, but they're kind of <clears throat> heading on that route, and um, I just wanted to give an update. I mean, one of the one of the issues is they, they put their bounds in, but of course they're not the right height. They're only four inches out of the ground, so we got to decide if we're going to make them redo the whole thing or not. I think there were like 25 of them. <laughs> So it's not just a few. Um, they're all in. It should be really about two feet or so. I think then that's is, just too low to let it go. Yeah, that's so it's, it's really low. A few seasons of grass and then it'd be gone. Yeah, that's, I mean, they're gonna that's eat. true. They're gonna, and this is, you know, it's not a small development. So are there so many basically in basically backyards? Okay, there are a few. That's true. The ones that are going to be mowed around. Yeah. Um, Those this, are dangerous. Yeah, so this is a better height for that. But, um, no, no, it should be higher. Oh, the higher. The higher so, right. so that if it's that's the yeah. elevation they could hit with the mower. Yeah. So there's, I think, um, there's only a few in the backyard. It's like maybe four or five, and the rest are in the woods. As far as I can tell. So yeah, the ones that are in the woods, it's going to be, if there's any kind of Growth or whatever it's so they have to like dig a hole. Do they, they do that by like, hand? Do they like usually like use a portion of the thing like there's an auger of some kind? I have no idea how they put them in. <laughs> I'm just trying to visualize how much work. I mean, it's it's their problem. Do we have a? It was in. I'm pretty sure it was in the. Do order. we have a, directions? Yeah. And I feel like, I, I mean, I don't know, Kevin's been doing this for a while, right? I mean, the ones at Rockwood Meadows aren't this small, are they? I haven't been there. One of them, was there one of them out there somewhere that got changed? Or we let them take it, that put it down lower or something? Never mind. Oh, well, that's um, cross ones, I think. Yes. Yeah, so this is... Oh, well, that's you know, terrible. I, I feel awful. I, I, I personally was... Have some just to raise the ones in the lawns. Okay. And, and not and let this go. That's just too much work. And because you're it's back in the woods. You know, um, They're gonna disappear in like no time. Like yeah, well. But they're there in case there's any question findings and good job. It's a compromise. Um, what what other people? Um yes, Marcella, Alan. Um, how difficult would it be to um, add on? Could you like pour some more concrete onto it? Especially? Drill a hole and put an iron on. Yeah, that's an idea. Maybe well, we should a... ask him if he has any ideas. <laughs> He's more of a construction mm -hmm. specialist than we are. Not my favorite rods because they're dangerous. They're yeah. But at least the ones that uh, are likely to be, the lot, I would like to see. Well, how... Go ahead, Michelle. Sorry. No, the, the ones that are likely to get lost in the shrubbery and the, you know, all the vegetation, I would like to see taller. Uh, the ones in the lawn, I can see the, um, you yeah. know, the danger aspect of it, but um, I would uh, like to see what needs to be. You know, I, I don't know how many there are that qualify as possibly getting lost in the undergrowth, but um, this one looks like it could easily disappear in a season or two. Okay. 
What about asking to install fiberglass markers in each one? You know, those flexible markers. Well, maybe uh, final order conditions could, could um, let's see, you know, stick it on the screen, could require that those be maintained. Is that like a fire Yeah, it's basically. I'm sure that technically that would last and be like getting the most supplies and maybe just slide in there next to each marker. I don't like the ones that were at 170 West River, those yellow stakes yeah. were yeah. on that. They were fiberglass. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, a bunch of them were on the ground. But at least if it's on the ground, you kind of know where the concrete is. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out so you What is what the rest of you think? Sure. Okay, that's so one by one. Uh, the, ones in, the ones in the law is agreed that we should ask them to raise the compassion spot. So they're not a product or a danger to one or. I think so. So that's a consensus. And then the ones that are basically in the woods, the people who said you have done nothing, adding a fiberglass marker to each one. Fiberglass is easy. It works. Sensor. Is it easy to remove too? Yeah. Of course. Um, I would be open to hearing what um, the developer has to say. Maybe they have some <laughs> other ideas. They may just they may maybe just as happy to raise them. Yeah. So. We should be able to sell. Marcella, if if you just point out the problem to him and ask him what he what he'd like to do about it, yeah, how we can solve the problem, and leave the say no problem, we'll go in and move them, or you know, right. then we can offer this compromise if it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not a lot of work. Basically, ask him each one, raise it. You know, like six inches. That's if that's a consensus, though. I guess maybe not even what we're thinking about. So, definitely the ones that we want to work together is where we need the prior options. Is that okay, though? Yep. Can I offer something? I think it would be helpful to confirm that your conditions had a stated. Um, yeah, they, most of them do. I will check that. I mean, David's standard order, this is one that David was 12 to 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just yeah, to be it. Yeah. Good point. It's really good that you check this. You will notice it. So if that's is that it for this, I think we can go on to the next hearing. 715 um, NY for High Street construction of Smith and Home Wetland Crossing continued for August 14th. Is there somebody here to we're online to Chris is here. Oh Chris is here. Um she's the big one. And someone else is here. Is six three eight six is that your Chris? Yes, six three eight six. Okay, so we have two Chris's. Where are they going to be here? Is anyone here for High Street? High Street? Yeah. No. Is anyone online? Nobody for High Street. Is anybody online for High Street? Uh, no, it's here. Well, I think um, I had been talking with the engineer all week. He's been calling in the big every day. I'm surprised he's not here. He was. He had said he was going to show up remote, um, but he did have another hearing. So, I'm sure the situation with that is, we can look at the revised plans. He has, but there is no DDP.
And these are actually, he sent me something at 5.30. This is what he had sent me yesterday. <laughs> You think he'll be joining us later this evening if he can? We can just kind of push this back. Yeah, maybe we should just push it back. That's fine. We can do that. Watch for him. There's somebody in the hall. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's all lady. Sitting on the floor No? She gone? Oh, oh she must have been with. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the daughter of the friend. Oh, yeah. I just want to make an agent report. Sure. Issues with Clough Farm. Not too many. Um, the path in back had had some erosion problems and they, it was like a, a fine stone and they got rid of that and put some gravel in, which is much better, but it still needed a little work. He assured me he was, they weren't done with it yet. And I really, I guess maybe we should talk to an engineer about this part. So this is not the detention pond, but it's like the four bay. And so the four bays are holding water. This was, I think it was a couple of days after a storm. Both of the pond, both of the four bays, there's two detention ponds and both of them had water. And I don't know what they're supposed to. There. And, and I, you know, in Webster where I worked, an engineer would always, like the town had an engineer that always go, would go out and check the storm water. I'm not sure Upton really has that arrangement. Um, and maybe the DPW takes a look at stuff to make sure they're happy with it before the road is accepted. Um, so this is like uh, the, there's a whale along the road and pipes go under the, the road and then it goes into the detention pond number one. But as you can see, this, this water is bypassing the pipes and just kind of sitting next to the So it looks like they may have a few issues just to work out with some of the storm water. I don't know what that, the angle here seems like, I mean, it's just, I think the water's going right past this unit and I don't know if it's going across the road or whatever. I, I wasn't there during a heavy storm. It'd be interesting to look at it to see how it's operating. What's it reading from here? Is that just debris or something? Oh, uh, this, that's a, they have a, that's like a straw bottle there. Oh, they, they were having a lot of erosion in their swales. Like they were having trouble. Like every time it rained, like, Signs would wash out. I think it was a little bit of a mess while well, it was under construction. Things seem to be better now. So those little holes, the water goes in there, goes under the road. Yeah. So it's very small than what you would, you know. Yeah, it does. It does look really small, actually. <laughs> but, um, although it's not a huge. Um, this is just. Just you know, this, this is right near the um, crossing, and so it would be anything coming down from Hopkinton Road just down past one house. It's basically one house. Anyway, I didn't do a full evaluation, but I will ask the planner if if they have an engineer go out and look at stuff. We can call over in the DPW. It seems to me I've overheard some conversations about work still going on here from the stormwater perspective. Okay. Um, and I, yeah, I do believe there will be conversations about the um, swales and that work as well as they could or should. Um, seems to me one of the issues is it's just very steep. Yeah, yeah, especially the lower. I mean, this is the upper road, but the lower part of the road. It's really. Yeah. And I know that. I mean, the guy that's from Lobster was saying that they've cleaned out the. They cleaned it out several times. But yeah, I mean, Dennis obviously wants to inherit a good system. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, especially before winter, I mean, yes. you know, it's a big ice skating there. Yeah. Are they looking towards how many new sections to run? I don't think they're afraid. Yeah, I was just how they're looking at Um, And then, oh, that's it with that one. This is erosion control inspection. We need yeah. the rest of it. He's 63 men in a row. He's already got his pad in, but he, he didn't quite finish getting rid of the 
you know, he had smoothed the dirt all around in his yard, and even right up next to the wetland. So he, he never moved that. <laughs> I asked him to remove it. And then this is just a picture at 169 South Street. We went to look at the edge of the vernal pool, and oh my God, I thought this was interesting. It really showed kind of, seemed to show the water level, just the, the moss of the tree. Uh, so a strong demarcation between the plants and the plants. Um, Mike and I did the site visit there, and we just determined that the pool was approximately 20 feet longer than they had set on the plants, and about five feet wider. She did, <laughs> she did uh, update her, update the plans, and actually added. She made it like 85 feet. So she just made it bigger, and so it will be a fairly accurate representation. But they're not on for another month. So we based our observations on that and also staying with this. Oh, here we have David. Okay. Great. Was, uh, yes, he's street. Hello, can anyone hear me? We can hear you. You're frozen, but we can hear you. Hi, my name is David Sadowski. I'm the principal of DJ and Associates. I, I couldn't find the meeting ID earlier, and I was on a Clinton conservation meeting. I apologize. All right, so we're on. We did. We finished Cider Mill, and we're on High Street, if you want to. Give us the update for High Street. Would you like me to share my screen or do you have something? I, I'd like you to share it. I sent you an updated <laughs> plan, a couple of them, an addendum sheet, and I also sent the wetland delineation report from Matt Morrow. Uh, and at the end of it was a cutout for a uh, open bottom box culvert. I tried to color enhance the screen to make it easier for people to understand. And I sent that around six o'clock. Yeah, I see it. I'm just going to download it and bring it up. I was waiting to get both the PE and the PLS stamps on it to make it an official document before I sent it down. I could verbally speak a little bit about it. Yep, you can start. Okay. All right. Since our last, um, there we go. Since our last meeting, we um, we had Matt Morrow go back out and delineate the bank of the um, intermittent brook to show where the box culvert was, would go. Before we were proposing a three by four foot wide, three foot high by four foot wide box culvert, we've now increased that to three foot high by eight foot wide, uh, 14 feet long. Um, we also checked all of the wetland flags uh, from A2 to A5, and then also from 10, which remained through 14. And we used, um, we had an auger we handheld. We looked at um, soils as well as uh, plant life on the top. Um, all of those locations are depicted on the plan. We show in color um, the travel way, and we show the two foot blocks that will be on either side. We've darkened in that box culvert, it's over. 1.2 times the width of the brook. The brook is about four and a half at the beginning. It flares to about seven. We're showing an eight foot wide box culvert through that area. Um, we've tried to darken the wetland line so you can see how much it encompasses. And that starts at that, there's a 42 inch diameter culvert that comes under that existing driveway uh, immediately to our, the right of our property. Uh, we show the flow as it goes down through. Um, on the second addendum sheet, we talked about different things that are going to have to happen. I couldn't send them both at the same time. This was 17 megs with the color. Um, and the other one was 12 or so along with the wetland report. Anyways, you can see the house further up. The septic system is 100 feet from the wetland uh, as it was before. The house, we moved it over a couple more feet, and we also moved out the edge of the um, 
erosion control to give us a little more realistic area to go around the house and work on it. That was suggested at the last meeting. So we made those changes to the plan. Um, with the revised uh, locations of the wetlands, four or five feet, we adjusted the 30 and the 50 foot and 100 foot buffer lines to show those uh, placements. We did walk the entire wetland line all the way to the right. And we actually went across Brook over to tw number 12. And we show those flags, even though they're not part of this project, they could be part of a future project over at 12 Stoddard. Those flags are A1 through A9. Um, but the second um, sheet shows there's one of those behind the guardrail face, it's called the W beam by Mass DOT. Um, there are I beams that are driven into the ground. One of those I beams is going to have to come out for us to have the driveway access. There's also criteria they talk about ADA sidewalk. That's been, yeah, right in there. If you could bring that up, I tried to color enhance that one a little bit too. The erosion control was yellow, uh, the wetland line was green. Uh, and you can see the blocks as they come down through. But if you slide up a little further, there's some guardrail section, a WB panel that needs to be removed. We're going to be 15 foot wide at the opening. We're calling out for ADA sidewalk on either side to match in. We show saw cuts that have to be neatly cut in order to achieve that um, slope for ADA access. There's granite curbing that needs to be removed. Bull noses need to be established at the end of the granite curbing as for MSDLT standards um we also show uh we show a proposed utility pole to bring electricity in that'll be sunk in that area that comes from the pole that's across the street across high street um you know everything is 521 cmr there's handicap notes up to the right there's also guardrail notes up to the right uh, when you're driving past the driveway that's called the trailing section you can put a rounded piece of of that w beam guardrail attached to the last post, but there's an impact one also that usually have a highlighted uh, reflective shield on it. It looks like a rectangle, almost like a um, something you could bounce into if you're a crash test dummy or one of those commercials. That's attached on the area of traffic flow. So there's different requirements in guardrail on the flow of the car and on the passing of the car. Those are noted on this plan. This plan needs to go to the highway department to get their approval for all the work that will be done on the sidewalk, the curb removal, the sloping of the sidewalks, the installation, removal of granite, the installation of bullnose, all those things will have to go through highway. But they're all shown here because they're within 100 feet of the buffer zone. If I've gone too fast, I'm sorry. I get excited sometimes when I talk civil engineering. I'm pretty much open to questions. Okay, um, any questions from the commission? Okay, Mary, first, any comments, questions? Um, I haven't really had a chance to review the updated plans. I did review, a, he's gone through a couple versions since the last meeting. I did look at the other plans a little bit. Um, there is no DEP number yet, and I would like to get out. If you moved, did you actually move some of the wetland flags? Uh, we moved, it's noted in the wetland report, wetland three flag, wetland four flag, 11, 12, 13, and 14 were moved as a result of soil probes. Um, okay, I, I would like to get out there and look at the... Uh, yeah, new they moved location. maybe four to five feet from the other location. Uh, one stayed the same, five stayed the same, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stayed the same, and everything from 15 on stayed the same. We could visit the flags that actually... Uh, move four or five feet. We also recalculated that area, as you had pointed out, Mary. We only calculated the eight foot driveway. We didn't calculate the two foot, um, two by two by four blocks that are going to be on either side of the driveway. So now it's a 12 foot wide by the width of that um, wetland that it's crossing. Right. So you have a, an updated, what was the updated number for that needed? What I, think was the five, I think it's 596. It's in the note section of the first sheet. Okay. An update that's the disturbance is 596 square feet. That's correct. And then um I, I think the replication is 900 something like that. Yeah. I don't quote me on that number. I just got out of a Clinton conservation meeting. 
where we're doing um, Riverfront, uh, giving back some impervious and other things like that. Any kind of questions from the commission or the audience? Okay, so I guess we need to continue this one. Yeah, there is no DEP number. Um, yeah. So we need so, to continue. Okay. And I, I'll try to get out there and look at your moving flags and stuff like that. Through, through the commission, I just, um, the entire package that was sent to you is being, was electronically sent to DEP and also will be hand, well, we'll be mailing the hard copies to them also. Okay, thank you. So, uh, motion to continue this hearing until uh, September 11th. Until September 11th at uh, New Wednesday, 7 15. Sure. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Marcella, aye. Yeah, I see. Okay, so uh, you're continuing to uh, tweak uh, the 15th. All right. Thank, thank you so much. And I, again, I apologize. I, I just couldn't get online quicker. No problem at all. Take care. Have a good evening. Chris, are you? Yeah, Chris is here. I tried to promote her to panelists, but she denied. She declined. Hey, I can hear you a little bit, Chris. Uh, do you want me to continue the, with the reading? Yes, please. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Port Brookside is up next. NOI construction of in-ground pool with outdoor patio kitchen and painting walls continued from August 14th. Anybody? Yeah, they asked, they sent a late afternoon continuation request because of no DEP in place. Okay, so. so um, So, Mary, can we continue with your report? We have two minutes. Um, do you guys want a motion to or vote to continue that? So, sure, maybe a uh, motion to continue uh, Fort Brookside until uh, 7 30. Um, what's that? Please? Second. 11. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alan, aye. Marcella, aye. Thank you. Yeah, the only thing else on my report, um, 54 Pleasant Street last meeting, um, if you guys remember, this was a determination of capability for a replacement of a driveway culvert. And the following day, I got a call from the OP and said, oh, did you guys already vote on this? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, we think this should be a lot. Um, and so just, anyways, I went ahead and issued the determination um, just to make the paperwork clean. Uh, DEP called the applicant and said, are you going to file an NOI? She called me and she said, should I? I'm like, you probably should. <laughs> so she's going to file, so she's going to file an NOI. So that's an update on that. And I guess uh, when I, DEP talked to me, the concerns was there was work within the resource area, just disturbance of bank. So even though it's it's a single family it's home. It's true, even though it's a driveway, it's a... Yeah. Yeah. Intermittent stream, yeah. so they will then they will be in, in it. So, even though it's replacements, they thought NOI was necessary. So that's the update on that. It's likely the plan will change, right? Yes, I I just said that yeah. just submit everything as a notice of intent and yep, yeah. that'll be quick. Yep, she submitted it today, so we'll have it on the next meeting. Give you a few minutes here until the next few. Um, what's the expense vouchers? Yes, we do.
So we have bills. Screen one's the community garden water bill. $193. And then the other one is slightly more complicated. It's the Esri renewal. And I couldn't figure <laughs> out how to make turn this into an invoice. Oh, you know, hit this button to request an invoice. It didn't work. Uh, at any rate, I, I'm going to try and submit the quote as an invoice. We'll see how that works. But it's $465. I assume you want to come in. The um, community garden bill, the, you look at the, what's left in the, community garden account is low because we bought the loan over. Over. Yeah. So I think the bill was almost $200 and we have $275 in the account. So we can pay this water bill and hopefully, well, I guess there might be another one depending on how much rain we get. So next year will they have to charge a little bit more for the well yeah we'll have to it should have, have to at least pay for itself. So. Yeah the lumber was a big it was five hundred dollar charge. That was yeah. a big expense. But do they do that every year? The uh, lawnmower? No, the, this was a brand new lawnmower. I don't know how long did they had the old lawnmower, quite a while. Oh about the bottle on the bottle lawnmower. I thought okay. Yeah. Okay. And we right. have volunteers to do that. Okay, well, I um, entertain a motion to pay these two vouchers with the, um, the community garden water, uh, water bill coming out of the community garden account, and the S3 invoice coming out of the general. I think in the past, it's come out of the expense account. Yeah. Okay. Any, any, any discussion on the mic? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Alan, I. Marcella, I. Aye. Three minutes. So, we'll get a chance to look at the minutes or anything. I did not. <laughs> I apologize. I actually did that time. Yeah. So, are they last meetings? It's last meetings today. Yes. So, you can't vote on if you weren't there. That's great. Right. <laughs> Marcella? Uh, I read them. I would make a motion that we accept them. You're absolved. Is there a second to accept the meeting minutes of uh, August 14th? Second. Seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Marcella, aye. Um, I'll aye. Stay, but that's the majority vote. All right, we're close enough to some of the So uh, COC 7802 311.0480, uh, construction of the multi flame housing. So this is this is off of Maple Street, correct? This is, yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so we're not, you know, Alan kind of, you know, submitted his request and I think what we're I'm kind of waiting on setting up a time to go out and GPS the bounds. Um, I didn't get around to asking Mike to do that until yesterday or the day before. Um, but I did put together kind of a letter and maybe people have other ideas. Um, something that can get go get recorded along with the sketch. I put together a letter kind of describing, you know, the process of how we got to what we got to. Um, and just that'll get recorded to go in the record at the registry. I don't know if people got a chance to look at that or not. I think I sent it yesterday. But 
And Alan had Alan Noise has looked at it. And he did not. He thought it described what we had talked about. So it just describes um, you know, what it is that we issued an enforcement order for the construction of the fire pit um, and a little bit of a history that there was never a certificate of compliance. The lawn had been maintained for years and years. Split rail fence that was supposed to have been built was never built. Um, and so just kind of describing the agreement, you know, the commission voted to allow them to use the fire pit um, but asked them to establish the bounds. And the bounds have been installed in three bushes, and they're allowed to mow a path to the fire pit. And then these um, conditions here are just kind of hopefully, you know, they'll be allowed to maintain the narrow path, no clearing vegetation, you know, beyond the bounds. And the bounds should be kept in place and not disturbed. Basically. This is a, if on a certificate of compliance, there's a spot for ongoing conditions. You know, these are not, these are not from the order. Um, what it said in the order was you have to submit an as-built, which they have not done because the contractor never did that. So this is kind of, I wrote up at the top in lieu of an as-built. This is kind of, I don't remember what So uh, it saves the homeowners are having to do an as-built and gives, um, so, it sounds like a good approach. It's protected resources and saves the homeowners expenses. Right. And uh, I don't know, to make this legally binding, I thought maybe we could have a signature line. You know, the homeowners association could sign it. You know, maybe Chris could sign it as a representative of the commission. And, yeah, yeah, it's recorded. Good idea. What kind of fire it is? Speaking of the fire department, I know like from oh, right. April 31st through January 15th, you can't have open fires. It's a, it's like a because the fire department it's like a marshmallow thing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what just kind of curious. I want to make sure the fire knows back there. It there. was dogs in the circle. Yes, I can I block have a picture of it. Do I have okay. a picture? I just heard the blocks in the circle. On Maple Ave, down yeah. behind them. Oh, it's, it's right behind Old Circle, right? Um, no, Maple Ave. Yeah. There's some condos on Maple Ave. Yeah, and it's below down there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's the not big. It's not big. It's like um, oh. three foot in diameter. Would that would explain the smoke smell? We always go out and investigate that area. <laughs> oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that we know, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it is near the railroad. We go quite frequently that area. Yes. Seeking smoke and not finding. Somebody calls in smoke and we're like, where are you? Yeah. Really? yeah. <laughs> this is uh, just kind of a picture. It's not very big at all. It's, there, it. it's, it's small. There it is. Yeah. So I thought I had another. It looks like an area around it. it so. There's a, a stream a little bit to the left. Yeah, there's a stream over here. And the wetland line, it, it is within the wetland. It's a relatively dry wetland, but there's yeah, really yeah. soil. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's that. So, um, Alan, unfortunately, um, I think we need to continue because we need to get the, the map ready. But um, I think I'm very hopeful that we can get this done by the next meeting. Get out there, get a GPS and get it done. Okay. So, I apologize for that, but. We're moving along. <laughs> <laughs> moving along, yes. I just, yeah, I just want to make sure that, I mean, obviously, I have, um, you know, other uh, homeowners here that want this, you know, buttoned up as well. So, um, <clears throat> obviously, I'm representing them, um, the association. So, just want to make sure that we're, we are moving this along, and everyone can all be rest assured that everything's been taken care of, and we're in. Uh, in compliance with with what's needed. Yeah, and I think uh, as I'm doing a little research on this, I was trying to, I was writing up the certificate of compliance, and it's two orders actually. The first order, number four fifty, was issued, and then the developer made a change to the plans, and instead of having them do an amendment, they had to do an entirely new order. 
And it appears that the new order, number 480, was never recorded. So that's an, another um, <laughs> snafu, but I, I would like it, I don't know if we can, I think we can make a copy of that old order and we'll just get everything recorded and done because the first order actually isn't valid because the second order supersedes it. So I think we have to get that second order recorded to make everything proper. So it'll just, it'll be another fee, but I think that's the correct, unless you can find it. I couldn't find it um, anywhere. Um, so that's. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin to look. I'm, I'm just doing what I'm told, so. Yeah, and, and the fact that when the lawyers, because for one of the other units, when it sold, they, they came up with the 450 and then the other one for Knowlton Circle, but they never found the 480 leads me to believe that it probably never was recorded. All right, yep, so that's that one. Okay, so we'll get, uh, motion didn't tee that until next uh, hearing, at, or next meeting at 7.45. So moved. Oh. Second. Okay. Second, okay, uh, any discussion? Um, okay, or, right. okay, so we'll see you in two weeks on this 7.5. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Ellen. Well, let's see. Um, we can go to um, the space committee update in about nine minutes. Oh, yeah, I can do that. We can uh, do that in three minutes. <laughs> uh, That's so, a watch feature. Right. Uh, the, um, there's nothing to update on while the state is still trying to figure out what it is they want to do. Um, we met with the owner and his son of uh, the land off of Bay Mountain Road. Uh, and I think they have a pretty good idea of what they want to do. Um, it's a little, I, it's, it's, it's clear they want to preserve at least 60 acres of it. Uh, they may want to give, sell half of that to the town and put conservation restriction on the other part of it. Um, and it ends right up with two triangle pieces, but you end up with 60 acres of preserved property. Um, but uh, they, we, we, went, we met with him on <laughs> Sunday because uh, his son lives in Austria and that was his time to do it. Um, and they, because we thought maybe this parcel might be a little bit candidate for this recently released uh, grant program, and it had a very short time, uh, but they're not ready. To move. So that's where we stand with that. Um, the uh, you know with the appraiser for the Mechanic Street property, so she's working on the appraisal for that six acre parcel, which about both seconds and one of the plastic wire. Um, nothing to update on the um, uh, the church land. I need to get with the recreation commission just to confirm and want access to the red comma. <coughs> I think that's it. Yeah. Bill, do you want to speak a little bit about that grant? Um, there's a, um, just came out, the state has a um, grant open for um, land preservation, um, but there's a very short time frame that's left. Um, it's pretty soon. That was 24, 47. Yeah. Um, but um, I've been reading the uh, request for proposals on. Um, can be used. You can purchase conservation restrictions on the use of there's a 50% match. That's how I understand it anyway. Yeah, we were looking at it differently. Really? Okay. We were thinking that the town could, uh, in effect, put a conservation restriction on the town owned land and use that as its 50% contribution towards buying another piece of land. That's the way we interpreted it. And I think that may be the case. We can discuss it some. Yeah. But, but anyway, uh, but if you're interested, I would suggest you call Tony and speak to him because he's talked to the one. Okay. He's, yeah. Okay. But what got in my head is for us, this is potentially the, 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 um, the grant program that we used to purchase the CR and for us, which is how I'm. But to do that, it doesn't mean it's like a new Yes, and there's some question of whether or not they would 
The fact is, is that land was given to the selectmen for conservation purposes. Not for chapter, probably not quite strong enough for Article 97, but it is, was, there is a conservation element to it, and that may make it less likely for DCR to uh, accept. But, yeah, that's not Article 97. No, I understand that, yeah. but, but to the extent that it was dedicated for conservation, at least in part, they may not want to fork out money for conservation restriction. It's true, but it's also got all sorts of. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, values that I think it would square with that. But we should. We should. I'd like to take another look at the, the your question. Oh, but again, I'd suggest you call on the You can also call the state. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's not much time, but. Um, no. The other, the other question is it's a 50 50, 50 percent mass. So. Yeah, we have all the time finding that money in three weeks. You want to find him I to just get the application there and the appraisal comes later and that's that's it's a real short time frame, but they're not requesting the stuff that you need to request for. Yeah, I think Tony said that um, they think they'll be offering that program again. Right. So these are all the match for your acquisition. Well, when we were looking at this, we were thinking that we might be able to get to the town to commit to preserving the town owned land. We would use that as a 50% match to acquiring the land from the, uh, the, basically the private owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we did. I can't remember. I, the way we, and that's the way we interpreted the program. I mean, it, it, it was fairly ambiguous. Anything else? No, I don't think you. Okay. So, so, no, uh, that's seven to six. So, uh, land search committee update. Nothing new. From our end, we did some trail work at Peppercorn. We put blazes up, um, Eric and Bill and I, on the new trail from Scarlata um, Trailhead. But um, that's as much as is going on with us. With us. Yeah, so, so now the members have proposed to work day later this month to you know, work on a program on the trail at Peppercorn. And uh, I guess it's possible or it will be moving longer. Well, and later on, we'll talk about um, Triple E and Harbor. Um, the other thing that's kind of search applies is um, the Mechanic Street parking lot. Probably going to start construction either uh, next week or the week after. We've got the water bills in place, and we saw that we've got the water bottles in town. They haven't installed yet. We also, um, I also went to Colony and got the um, Black Locust Pubs for the kiosk. We give them to SVT. We might be there next in town and they can fix up the kiosk. Yeah, we, we talked about the parcel that was offered to the town. Since that's kind of an open space. And, Time. Yeah, probably in, in, uh, probably. It's on the. It's yeah, on yeah. The no, time. I just thought we have time. So, in stewardship, we um, we have a list of projects or activities with um, a name associated with kind of a project manager point of contact for each one of them. That's how we're operating right now. No one has. Uh, we don't have a chair right now. Down a member. So stay tuned on that. But we're trying to keep, keep things moving. So um, it's almost there, Colin. Um, COC for 70, no, 324 Street, 311 and 1796. Construction of a retaining wall. Unless the new guys. That's me. All right. What's up? It's done. 
I got the grass, the plants are growing, the oil is done. Mary smiled a few times and she's coming. Are you to looking speak. for permission to start your project? No, to finish it. Oh. Oh, it's done. So, 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 so. Oh, all right. I didn't, didn't catch that part. Yeah. All right, so one of the requirements of the order was to submit a sketch showing where the bushes were. So we have two sketches. Here's the retaining wall. There are seven bushes along the wall, three a little further out, and also this area of photo shows it as well. And the shed was moved. And the shed, as you can see, is over here now. It's not in the wetland. And Here's the original plan showing the old wall and the new wall. The wetland line is the blue. I wasn't known for my drawing skills. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so here's my review. I don't remember what we talked about, but it was supposed to be two different types of plants. And I think you planted all sweet pepper bush, right? Yeah, two different varieties of sweet pepper. Oh, you have two different varieties. Of sweet yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think the order mentioned like blueberries. It was you know, some of the four. Yeah. I think it's fine. <laughs> that I just wanted to let you know that it does deviate from the order in that way. And the other, you put them in the spring, right? Planted them in the uh, end of April. End of April, right? So. If we wanted, we could, you know, the order technically requires a full growing season. We could have, wait a month to make sure they're okay. They look very healthy to me. Um, yeah. Or we could just go ahead and issue the certificate. Trust me, ninety-five dollars a pop. Those things are going to live. And this is just uh, you water in them every day. You better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to scale it. <laughs> so here's the area where the shed was, which is wetland area. Just letting it go to you know grass or whatever's growing. Here's the plants that have been installed. I think he is mowing a small area with the bird feeder so he can feed his birds. The wife likes to sit on the porch and look at the birds. Yes. And this is a before picture. This is the, what it looked like before the wall. I think the wall is going where the flags are. And the shed was in the wetland. Yeah, it was in the ice wall. Yeah, so this is, this is the before. This is last winter. I'm um, showing the wall constructed, but before the berry bushes were in. And it shows the, I picked this picture and it shows the shed moved, corner of the shed. And this is also last winter. You can see it looks much, much better now. Yeah. That whole area is all well A lot of was a process of trying to get the shed up. Yeah. I used a crane to lift it out of there, but yeah. Um, getting the boards underneath it to lift it up was a challenge. Yeah. So as you can see, if we go back to the, oh, awesome. So here's the, so I think um, we may as well go ahead and issue unless you guys have concerns about waiting an extra month. Is there a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 311-0796? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Any no. Hearing none. Not Aye. 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 Alan, I. Marcella, I. Okay. And Mary, thank you for all your patience. Yeah, no, we well, have. <laughs> yeah. I know I challenged you. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I know I'll see you next time. Well. <laughs> Basically, next to you, give us a little joy. Yeah, take care, Gerald. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the discussion items. Extension for 311-0602, Nang Hunford Avenue, addition to my house. Is that the one across from the Dr. Benelman's Yeah, so they, she's been having health issues, so they just didn't the doctor. They're asking, and this has been extended several times. I believe the order which is issued 2007 or 2009, but they really are Almost, they finished all the work. It's 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 more just waiting for the soil to get established. Where is this? Right across from the Dunkin' Donuts on Hartford Ave. Oh, okay. They put an addition yeah. in. That was a long time ago. Yeah, 
it's it's been in process for quite a while. Yeah, so. actually, I drove by this this morning or this afternoon and thought, yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. Oh, really? Oh, good. It's looking better. I know because actually, I was there a few weeks ago and they had dirt almost covering the erosion control. And I actually I was thinking to myself, oh, they're finally getting that finished. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so they'll, they won't need any more extensions. So do you want a motion to issue an extension? Do you want a motion to issue an extension to 311 and 0602? Is that three? No, so we'll three 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 or, yeah, yeah, we could do one year, but you may as well do No, we do three. Yeah. Uh, second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, Mike on. Sandy, I. Ellen, I. Marcella, I. I'm all stunned. Um, okay, next on the agenda is land donation. This is what Bill was talking about. It's parcel 14 08 It is somewhat um, adjacent to the uh, King Street property. Bill's going to explain what some of the things are. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of things actually. Uh, the land is actually uh, virtually taken by the town already. The tax fee. So uh, somebody would have to talk to the treasury director about whether or not the owner even has any right to donate it at this point. Um, and technically, it's town on land. So where is it? Uh, it's it. Um, it's it is it's uh, it's between uh, Fowler and the south boundary of the uh, and we just acquired on the county here. Oh. And, and it uh, okay. there's a, the land got subdivided. It was owned by the Hendersons. Uh, in fact, that it was still owned by a partnership that includes some of the Hendersons, uh, and it included Tom Olasky. It's actually his wife and something. They live in Moore Street. But in any case, there was a partnership and they owned a bunch of that land on Fowler Street uh, under, beneath the land we just bought. Uh, got subdivided several times, and somehow this triangular piece of land, which is about an acre, roughly. I mean, it's not a lot of land, but it got basically, it ended up getting lost. lost. Um, so the partnership still, is up, still owns it, and apparently they stopped paying taxes on it a while ago. The town has taken it. The last thing they filed, which was in June, uh, was a petition to the land court to foreclose on the owner's right to, to redeem it. So you know, this point, you know, what really can be done from the owner's perspective? It's a legal question. The other issue is, is that I, I think technically you can't access it from the Mechanic Street property. I mean, if they if both landowners posted their land, you'd come to the point and there'd be no way you could get through forward. Yeah. Um, you basically have to you jump over jump the off, Jump off. You have to climb up on the foot wall and then <laughs> dive into it. Um, and then you're, you know, it's the backyards. And, An average. Yeah, and, and it's the back, you know, it's basically adjacent to a backyard of two homes on the Palmer Street. Um, it, 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 certainly the parties that most likely would have some interest and could use it in some way would be the butters. But for some reason, Mr. Well, has to buy it. Well, he does want to offer it to them. Oh. Uh, is that as I understood? Well, then the town could offer. Uh, conceivably, the town could take it. Set so, auction. Auction. Uh, um, I just, you know, it's not that much land, and it's really not accessible. You know, my guess is the owners, the butters, would be coming to the town anyway, and saying, "Hey, do you mind if?" Actually, one of the plans during this whole process. Says that it would become part of one of the existing lots. Uh, but the way things panned out in terms of the way land got sold. Somehow that's ringing a bell. Um, so, Weird. so, so no action required? I, at this point, I would just let just the let town it take it to figure out. I mean, if we were, <laughs> if there was some thing on it worth preserving. And I said, you know, why not? That's not going to get this thing would be for the town to, to, to take it and 
sell it. Sell it to be a buyer. Tax yes. See if they could collect their taxes. Somebody could go in with a drone. Yeah. Where's Alan? So I'm here. Yeah. Drones are good. Yes. <laughs> Right, right, no action required. The task I end up taking the property. Um, somebody's gonna have to talk to Mr. Oplosky at some point and say more or less lost it already. Is the assessor, maybe? Uh, assessor and collector. Thanks, Will. Um, next is as we renewal. We talked about that already. And then it's triple D and land stewardship of the bench. So I, I asked Mary to have this. Um, there was a, a according to the board of health web page um, on this board up. There was a triple E mosquito um, in Upton. Um, I think that was uh, maybe a week or so ago, um, the actual protection. Um, the state currently has um, Upton as a moderate, I think it's moderate risk. Over on Triple E, Northbridge, Uxbridge, Thank you, Kevin. Uxbridge, Northbridge is high risk. Um, so, I have a question in, in what kind of problem this? Uh, uh, in the mountain bike, uh, what Flaxton uh, Valley doing the mountain bike folks? Planning to do some travel to get Peppercorn. Uh, I think it's working, but it's not done with it. Something like that. Um, and they were just, uh, you know, there was some email traffic about that. And I think you do real much people out in the woods until the car drops, basically. The risk is gone. It's great that you're in trail work and it's trails so that you can work for a long time. Um, I think the last time we, we um, had a triple E situation a few years ago, we did try to avoid trail work uh, until it was hard to cross. If I remember right, yeah, we did. Um, but what do people think? Do we, um, we want to sort of, sort of suspend you know, sorts of activities? Most activities that are in the woods basically um, until it was hard to cross just to be extra safe. Awesome. Uh, well, I, I, I have to legislate safety and stuff. Uh, no, it could be an individual's decision. I personally am not concerned, and it wouldn't stop me from engaging in the activities I usually do. And with personal protection, I don't really worry. Um, the risk is incredibly small. Um, but the risk is there, so people should be aware of it. But um, I'm not canceling any of my plans on kind of this, so um, just my my personal thoughts. People make their own personal decisions. Can schedule it in the middle of the day when the mosquitoes are the least. Well, they are active. Oh, if if you're in the woods and you disturb the the vegetation where they're resting, you yeah. be there. Yeah, so they're they're there and they're you know the risk is still there. Um, yeah. if you're in the woods. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Yeah, I'm very curious. I mean, DCR has all sorts of hikes scheduled in in Worcester County, and. I'm uh, like, interested. No, I, I'm gonna actually contact this evening to attend and cancel the, the lead hikes when they have a full schedule for the month of September every Sunday. No. So, when will the first freeze be? Because then it would be better after that. Um, it might not be until November, for heaven's sake. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's here. It's so it's there have been fewer mosquitoes in my backyard this year than most. I have no idea why. That's been my experience walking. Really? And ticks. 
All right. Yeah, I they were a, terrible at the beginning I, of the I'm season. I'm a dog, so, you know, like I'm a tick Nazi, you know? <laughs> well, maybe it might be worth um, I didn't even put just like asking people to put like a yeah. warning, you know, just make sure people know that it's mm -hmm. around. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a motion to suspend voluntarily and stewardship activities until the first heart marks. I don't know if anyone else wants to second it, but that's the promotion. I think there's a risk. It's a small risk, but it's, it's, it's I, I think that if we it's inform the volunteers of the of the risk and they can make their own decision, I I I feel better about doing that. Well, um, if my motion was to suspend it, if, 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 if no one's going to second it, then uh, if someone wants to make a different motion, feel free. Well, how many volunteer situations? Like, you know, there's nothing on the schedule except um, the thing on the 14th um, at Peppercorn, which actually abuts Hopkinton, which is a low risk community. Um, so depending on where this mosquito was found, <laughs> we, you know, we, we may or may not be endangering our volunteers there, but um, that's... This there is a pretty extensive red maple or hardwood wetland uh, near Rockwood Meadows, near Pepper Point. Mm -hmm. The habitat where uh, one of one of the, uh, one of the uh, vectors, common vectors, happens. Well, my concern is that land stewardship has so much on the to do list that to put things off until November is just setting us back further, which is fine by me. I've got things to do and places to go, people to see and all that fun stuff. So I don't mind missing a work date here and there, but that's just, um, you know, we, we're just swamped with work. We have a, a to-do list that is very extensive. Can we make a statement that everyone's at their own personal risk? Make sure they understand what that means. Require that they use insect repellent. I mean, there are people who won't use it. Yeah, I don't use it. I'm allergic to it. I, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was talking to the I was thinking about someone else. But, but um, I, I don't know. Uh, so, my motion has been seconded. Does, does anyone care to make uh, another motion, or we can just move on to the next topic? Yeah. Well, I would move that we continue as we normally would, but inform participating volunteers and, and others of the risk, and they can make their own choice about participating. Well, could um, wear protective clothing and also use citronella or something um, that would repel the tomatoes rather than DEET or anything like that. So, so motion, Marcel, do you want to restate your motion? Oh, I, I, I would just. I mean, I don't know if we even need to vote on it, but um, I would say that we continue as we we typically do and inform volunteers or potential volunteers of the risks and let them make their own decision about helping with trail work. Second. Motion was seconded. Any further discussion? And well, um, let go. Sandy, aye. Alan, aye. Say. Marcella, aye. Thank you. Uh, Upton Ridge CR language question. Um, get close to having that the um, the CR approved for the state, but. Um, Mark from Pulte contacted um, uh, me and Mary today or yesterday. Was that yesterday? Um, and I just noticed there was one, there was one, one thing um, that an earlier draft had, met, had mentioned uh, 
including as in low use establishment of the community garden. And um, there really wasn't any any text associated with just like the community garden. Um, and then um, the state asked a question about we need more information. And I think Pulte just completely moved the community garden option. And so it's no longer in the current near final draft. And the question I have for people is, you know, do we want to add back in a provision and a lot of use and see you know, for them? For the homeowner that homeowners group or association to establish a small community garden or not. Um, if you want to do it, I could write something up for the um, for the amount of views that could be you know, inserted into the CR. If not, we don't have to do anything. Are there any more specifics or it's just it would be pretty general, just we maybe could probably limit the size of it. Yeah, I think because this is we're talking woods here. Right. Mostly, yeah. yeah. It's not open. Yeah. I, I can share that. Yeah. But I was thinking about it because when I walked the site with Mike Rosati, I was like, well, where can we put a garden? I was trying to think. That site is really tight. It's either detention basins or yards. There's not a lot of like big spot for it. On the, that's that's outside the bounds. Let's see what conservation restriction. I think it's mostly woods. Yeah, it would definitely require things of trees. Yeah, so I, that that would be a, a downside to it. So pretty much the disturbance goes pretty close right to the CR. Yes, this is the CR here, right? Is it showing? Oh yeah, the boundaries here. And like, if you look at the rest of the development, I mean, there's just very little space. Maybe it's just not appropriate for them. Yeah. How big are people's yards? It's kind of so it's like acre. No, no, it's no, it's just there's four townhouses together. I don't know if you can see on the screen. It's like oh, so okay. they're single family homes. Right, but they're town. They're right next to one. They're right. They're not joined. They're standalone. Oh, so some of them, a lot of them are joined. No, I've been in most of them. Okay. You're definitely they're very close to one another. Yeah. But yes, you could put a if it if the if the bylaw or whatever permits it, you could put a raised bed or two in your backyard. Yeah, they do have a little room for that. That might be better than actually trying to make. There's not one big area to make right. a community right. garden. Okay. In, uh, could you do some? Can they do something in the field? I don't think there's even really a field. Well, the field that the that we walk through to get into the this is Upton Upton Ridge. Oh Upton Ridge, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I was confusing. I I was thinking Rocky Meadows. Yeah, sorry. No, this is Upton Ridge, yeah. And so there's really there's like it's really tight. So um, is, is that the CR the dotted line? The CR limit is the dotted line. So the CR is in this area and it's kind of on a hill and it is it's it's woods now. So we, it would be nice to have the other issue they had there, the guy from the homeowners association was telling me is they had a problem with rats actually. So they were asking people not even to grow vegetable plants because they were getting rodents in the, like in the stone walls or something. I don't know whether that's going away. Someone told me, you know, when they took that mill down in Hopedale, I don't know if this is an old wives tale, that all the rats went out and up. It could be chipmunks. Chipmunks, <laughs> right? You know, it's probably those little chippies that live in the stone walls. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, I think just that. I think you should just let it go. Because they don't have the space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, next is Dogwood West Trails. Um, we received a uh, email or marriage to email from the uh, Two dollars now. Yeah. 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 They're not like they're not interested in the trailers, but um, they're never going to be satisfied. Well, no, no, this this isn't this, something else. This is one dog, and not the other yeah. uh, people. Other dog would issue. Um, but I don't know if we we'll follow up and ask for just an, an MOU that wasn't reported. Oh, yeah, no, I just. That they, that they could, they could um, and explain that you know the uses can be for your neighbors, you just do a loop. 
Yeah, I don't know. Or just let it go. Yeah, I don't know. That I, uh, yeah. Um, not sure. I mean, it seems like we, at this point, we have, I mean, just Jake and Annie have been waiting on us for a year to do our post plan with them, um, which we need to move forward. Okay. We're amenable to when we talk to them before. Maybe phase it, maybe take care of that first and we'll come back to this or, yeah. think, or not. It's too bad it would be, I mean, it's way in the back. It's not even anywhere near our house. It's being along, along the road. Right. I see that maybe someday ask the railroad if you have a small one, five foot. Yes. Uh, That's a good yeah. idea. Rail and trail. Yeah. And that is, that's, I mean, that is a concept. So, yes. I, and I'm hoping that uh, Mr. Dillon is already well sell it to somebody who conceivably could be one of the yes i think we'd have to put a fence up uh but i mean yes it would be on the rare property and we could go around that one absolutely so consensus is let's try to re-engage the writers concerning trail easement on their property we want to kind of let this out but I mean, we still don't have the option of having a loop trail which goes between two houses. So, so you really want to go there? Right. I'm sure someone's blown. Yeah. Well, um, Nobody wants a trail between the houses. So I feel bad every time I think of that area. I wouldn't want any of those homes. And there's one on that with a walk it's behind my house, between my house and the next. I think there's one at Rockwood Meadows though that goes right between two yeah. units. Yeah. It's another one up at, on the up up on North Street. They've got mm -hmm. them up there. So yeah. Yeah. I walk Every time we walk one of those sites and they say the trail will go right here, you go, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing but trouble. Well, no, in your backyard, and people are walking by. And, and when someone buys a house, trailers are you not know, that good. They should the, know. With them whining about it after. Right. The realtors should make it really clear. And they did a really nice job with it at Clapham Farm because they got a split row fence on either side. You know, yeah. it's, it's really yeah. They did ended up with something like that up on. Exactly. Well, there's a nice path between there's some yeah that I mean they they, they, they um, kept a, a wide you know, area so it's, yeah I, I, well advertised yeah. and just for the benefit of the whole basically just for the benefit of all the property that was right and, and that is that and you mentioned the case which I thought it was oh Claflin Farm. Is that just for the benefit of the Claflin Farm? Well, there's no parking there out of a cul-de-sac could handle cars. Yeah, I mean it's probably mainly for the residents. Yeah. Although I'm tempted to go park here and that's for the quicker access to the right. It's not sure walking. Yeah, and I guess from my perspective, as the area gets more Yes, you have no option right. but to walk next to people. He says, Marshall and I walk a lot of trails over in Westboro, and some of them are, you know, oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> the one around the reservoir, yeah. 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 Yes. But, you know, I think people maybe. That's where I grew up, right behind the reservoir. Okay. Well, it's a lot of screen. It is nice. Yeah. yeah. It's mostly nice. Yeah. But it's well populated. That's that's what you're saying. A oh lot yeah, of people yeah. There. right. I mean, you're walking. Yeah. In, I mean, it doesn't really feel like we're in somebody's backyard. Yeah, I go over there and walk. Yeah, I don't like to walk on the the road because it's hard on my hips. But state forest is too dark and buggy. So I go over there and walk around the rest of what, what what kind of bug is it? Buggy. <laughs> I haven't been over there in a long time walking the state bars. I don't know why I stopped. Something turned me off over right there. Oh, people in there run wild. We I were mean, there the other day and it wasn't too buggy. 
I guess I'm more thinking about the dogs. So every time I go up there, somebody's let a couple of dogs off leash. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a real pain in the neck. Mine are on leash no matter what, you know. They run up to you. Oh, he's fine. I'm like, fine. Well, mine are not. <laughs> and I say that. My, my dogs are, are pretty good with other dogs. One of them's not. But I always say, well, they're not. So, deal with your dog. Yep. I'm on a leash. I hear you. I'm tired of restraining my little monsters whenever some dog runs up to them. At least you can pick yours up. <laughs> no, we have a big one now. I, I couldn't pick up out. the other. <laughs> one on 30 pounds on the other. Standard. You can pick oh. those up. <laughs> <laughs> And he yeah. tries. <laughs> so he can get his paws up on Marcella's shoulders. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. We have a competition. We should finish our meeting here. Yeah. yeah we're, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, there's only a couple of Sorry. Butler Natural Area MOU with SVT. No big fun. Not a comment. I think maybe we should just leave that all on. But uh, the idea was to get a trail from. Uh, Whitney conservation area through the Bonner natural area to Forest Heights. Um, there is a there is a draft in here from months ago. Yeah, I put it in um, some drive. Like, um, I think it's on You know, if people are interested in pursuing that, I can let them have a comment board know that Hawkins interested. It's kind of the, at the draft, I believe it was kind of modeled after, I think after the Buckley Meadows. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Yeah. And so, it basically allows the town to in a trail on the bottom of the ocean well, I think I said a loop trail and a connecting trail to the forest heights on it. It says that explicitly in the antennas. That's interesting. Meta comment doesn't have much to do with resources or stewardship. So we should have the, the boards on for selecting metric No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I'm just a commission. Uh, could you go to back to the signature page there? Signature page. I think I added. Just I uh, think Chris and I are both off of that because we're board members. Or just uh, the rest are you members. And that's something you think that SVT would be oh, that kind of yeah, yeah. I've yeah. had some discussions already. I think we find the other SVT would actually be about two because they all the see on bottom. That'd be great though, right? You could go all the way through. Yeah. I have a piece of land on by the now and I trust them better. Cancellation strip and plug. I just said that we all are trustees. And in the memorandum, I was understanding or agreeing with your town of the conservation commission. We can think of someone's paperwork. Anyway, well, if, does anyone want to make a. Uh, I think we'll just make a motion. Maybe let no comment know that the town is uh, amenable to this option to turn that on. I will make that motion. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any further discussion? 
Voice vote. The aye. Sierra. Marcella, aye. Allen. 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 Yes. Chris Mike, Mike abstains. Chris abstains. Thanks. Solid no comment. And the last thing is biodiversity conservation goals. There was an email that came. Yes. From the state is looking for comments. Chris. I answered that one and um, forwarded it back to them. Oh, so it's all, it's all done. It's all done. Okay. All right. I have one thing that should have been in my agent's report. Something for the smell road. I did a separate site visit report because it seemed like it was done. Megan, I had mentioned this before 74 Fist Mill Road. Um, this is the where all the sediment from his lawn went into the wetland. So he now has silt fence up. Uh, we kind of did a little bit of augering and he agreed to remove the soil from this path, you know, this arbitrary line between the tree and a rock. Seemed like that was probably close to the edge of the wetland. He was gonna get it out and get rid of it. It's going to seed everything, loam and seed everything this fall. And supposedly he was going to do this by the end of August. So hopefully he's already moved it. I haven't driven that recently here and there. Um, and he was also going to pull some trees. I gave him permission to take down this red maple, sick. And then a few more, not in the wetland, they were in his lawn area. It's these over here that he was interested in. And then, of course, when you talk to homeowners, there's always the, oh, the water from the road is running into my land, which I'm sure it is. So it's that, it actually, I never did reach out to Dennis about this one. It, see, it looks minor, but it could be, you know, it's kind of eroding his lawn a little bit. But Tyler Road is across from there. So I'm sure it's getting some. Um, what's the last name? Of the person? Boy, not I, I, I can check. I, I've talked to several people on the fifth mill road. Yes, yeah, so this is 74, so he's directly across from Tyler. Um, the name is Tom. I, I, I can easily figure it out. Yeah, anyway, so, and hope, I mean, this was, you know, hopefully he'll get it cleaned up um, without us having to do enforcement. It seems to be the men uh, What did he do to create the situation? Well, he I put the development and across. Look, his, look at his. Uh, I mean, it really he probably should have had some kind of filing for this. I mean, we could potentially ask him to do a determination because he did a lot of grading on his lawn, you know, fifty feet away from the wetland, and it did get into the wetland. So we could ask him to do an after the fact filing to formalize it. Um, we could do a, an enforcement order to kind of give it some more formalization. I haven't even written a letter. This is what did we do? Nothing? We were just going to write him a letter? Well, we were going to ask him to come to a meeting and have me meet with him, which I did. I did meet with him and he, you know, we came up with so a you came up with plan. Well, yeah, we came up with a plan forward, but I, I, this is kind of up to the board. If, you know, do we want to do anything? Do we want to ask him to file a determination? Do we not want to ask him? Or do we want to just issue enforcement and, you know, make the plan formal or... I don't know that we have to issue enforcement. He's very, you know, amenable. Um, if he's working on the problem and it gets solved. Right. I feel like as long as there's a little bit of a paper trail. And in this report, if he's resistant, yeah. then maybe we need a paper trail. Yeah. Maybe you could put a swale there with some fresh stone or something to catch the water. Off the road and direct it. Yeah, I mean... He had basically he has two issues: the water coming off the road. So the road's way over to the right here, and so he's got water coming off the road there. But then all the water, most of the dirt, I think, is from his lawn. It's not. From the road. And of course, he said, "Oh, it's from all the yeah." So we'll see what it looks like after he's got it pulled away. At at the edge, it was only like four inches deep, four inches thick, but I think it might be a little thicker. So we'll see. So I think we tried to grade his lawn there so it'd be level. And we'll just, we'll just 
the rain came before he had a chance to see the. I think this is a slow one of those projects that's been going on for a while. You know, I didn't didn't really. Yeah, because I feel like I, I kind of feel like he's been before this point. You know, he obviously cut a bunch of trees down. You know, well, and he was trying to make his lawn a little bigger. Um, and maybe we want to ask him to put some bounds in. You know, we. And then that would be one reason to do it, having to do it to your determination or something. Just so he knows where his edge is. And then the wetland, I didn't look, I couldn't, I don't think I found a plan for it. You know, this house is old, but the neighbor's house that went in is, I think is newer. There might be a wetland delineation for that house. So. I'd like to see a paper trail if we could do that and um, whatever would be least the least imposition on him, but would have some weight. I mean, if we need, if you think there might be a call for putting bounds in, then we definitely need to you know, have him submit something. I think looking at, looking at his slope where all the erosion patterns are, you probably should do something with that slope to make it so that the water doesn't run that way. Yeah, so we just, he's going to, I received very shortly in the next few weeks. He, this this didn't have loam on it. It was just kind of the subsoil that was eroding. So he was going to loam it and hydro seed. Fingers crossed that, that was going to work. Um, you might need a, something a little bit more substantial than hydro seed. But, but with that runout, I mean, fertilizer and everything else will run out to about two. So. Well, if you think it needs bounds, then he's going to need to file something. Whatever's easiest for. A a determination. Him. Can we do a bounds on a determination? Well, when we have septic projects, we have to do bounds on them. some of them. Some of those, like a, well, I'm trying to think. Maybe we don't usually do bounds on determination. Definitely wouldn't have as much weight as right. That's true. For conditions. Yeah. Could we put? Could you put matting on part of that slope? to make it more stable. Yeah, I think that could be a good idea. And maybe some of the, um, um, I would say, what did you pick up, Mike? The cell socks at the end or at the bottom? He just has a silt fence right now. Um, but yeah, he maybe could use something a little bit more substantial. Um, we have straw, straw matting, but, but we don't want them to use the possible poly. I know that's the thing. Um, you, you, can't, can't, uh, you can't get like 100% organic matting, but you also wouldn't, you wouldn't want it too dense because you want the grass to grow up okay. quickly. So it's kind of. Yeah, I feel like if the hydro seed works, yeah, then it's yeah. good, but if it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, then maybe go to matting over the winter. Well, if he has a silt fence there, putting something up on up to catch the soil. I think that um, I think of how far it is. I feel like the, the wetland is maybe fifty to seventy feet away from this bottom of the slope. And I think before he did this clearing, there was a natural buffer of like 50 feet. It was a wooded buffer. It was wooded. The, the clearing has been going, happening slowly, you know, a little piece of time. That's why I remember. We didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the consensus is Mary's going to ask for a request for termination. Thank you. Discussion. So it's on the agenda. Does anyone have anything else? No. Um, A1 Prime, just the oil release. I don't know if he has a. Um, yeah, that's just, uh, that's. Enough. Yeah, it's just if we're only finished. that they removed an oil tank and there was some gas under it, right? It wasn't that they had a major spill and they had to have a big cleanup in. 
while it says release of oil to soil exceeding reportable concentrations and affecting more than two cubic yards. Um, yeah, when you read the fine print, you're just like, oh. <laughs> so what what do we do about it? Just monitor it? I mean, they it they does monitor it. Be. Yeah, they're monitoring it. So. As of the site recovery, that's what that is. Yeah, so it's just an FYI. Yeah, that's what Denise did when she first went for the to the team. Yeah, really, yeah, that was one of the most yeah. They did the other gas station in Upton, and no? maybe it was oh, before they, your time. Oh, that was like, yeah, that came up down, way down, down the corner. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Our house on this oh, discovery and we just recovered it. One of the documents we're signing. Oh, okay. So I made a mistake on the ones for Warren Street, so we just need to resign them. These are the Warren Street ones. And I may, I don't know. Oh, Chris isn't here, so she can't sign those. That's fine. This is, this is Spice 51 Cider Mill. That's the order. This is the certificate of compliance for 32 Forest. Do you want me to extension it? for Hartford Avenue? Yeah. It's a lot of paper. And then Crockett Road, they lost their order, so we're doing a reissue. We didn't vote on it, but I just assume people just need to sign it. Do you want me to stop by and sign those, Mary? I do have a lot of papers to sign, either you or Marcella. Maybe. I could do that tomorrow. Oh, you're already taking out, Mary. I know. I'm sorry. No, wait, no, no, that's fine. I wanted to say one last thing, but that's all. No, that's you know, that's that's not, not. just add your name. You're on some of them, I think. Get on them. I did. So you all have to sign. sign. Yeah, sign them. Actually, I can sign those for you tomorrow. Do you need until next June? I said not really, but I. Uh, no. Yeah, Chris, I'm, I'm out of the office tomorrow. So what I can do is I'll leave I'll them. Um, what? I, don't, I, don't, I can't really leave them with Denise, but I'll, I'll put them on um, Helena's desk and you can ask Denise to tell her to get them. Or you can sell them on next Tuesday, Chris. Okay. That would work. Yeah, tomorrow um, I switched Tuesday and Thursday this week, so I will not be in the office tomorrow. Okay. It's not like his first day. Do uh, they have kids today? Oh, well, yes. Yeah. They they seem like they're like, we oh, like good. Um, <laughs> with a little shell <laughs> shock. Well, that's why it's good they do the two days back, I think. Yeah. It sort of gives everybody a chance to recalibrate. And, you know, I asked them, so what's on your plan? She's like, well, they told me that we shouldn't do any work till after the holiday. I'm like, so what are you doing? Oh, we got to do something. They got to do review. They introduced each other, and I think they were going to have them talk about whether there's more wheels or doors in the world. Great. Good or wheels or doors in the world. Oh, that's interesting. That's a good one to, to debate. <laughs> Estimate how many doors in the building. Right? Yeah. I go with wheels. <laughs> Depending how big the wheels are. So they're not the size. No, it's no, because Elliot was saying, yeah, you think about all those Hot Wheels cars. What's it, Elliot? I'll have to ask Lauren if she gets mad at me. My daughter in law works in, uh, she's in the fifth grade. Oh, she's okay. She's a fifth grade teacher. Yeah, so Elliot's in the high school. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but they, they, are, they all have meetings together. Um, and she's math for fifth grade, so okay. they have any yeah. math meetings. Fifth grade at the school. At the school. My daughter in law. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's her name? Lajoy. Oh, Lauren Lajoy. Okay. This is Lajoy. I, I don't know. I know. I feel like um, one of my kids. Oh, you know. <laughs> math. She does the, does the math. Well, she does everything, but you know they they focus. So she works with. Uh, Brenda Quinlan now, what's Brenda's last name now? Something else, I forget. I'll come to me in a minute, Brenda. Do you have anything else? I think that's it. We signed all the documents, and if Chris can come in on Tuesday, that'll be good.
You want this back? Or you? All right, you can get some souvenir. It's a souvenir. Hang up in your office home. Yeah, this is Dave's last meeting, everyone. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, all right. 